Hello and welcome. My name is George. My channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today, we're going to look at the Arpeggiator MIDI Effects plugin in Logic Pro. We'll take a look at all the different functions and show you how you can use it to help augment your own tracks. So let's dive in. So first I'll start by explaining what an arpeggiator does. So what an arpeggiator does is it'll arpeggiate through a group of notes. So basically it'll take a chord and then break those up into individual notes so that you get a melodic sound rather than just a chordal sound. So for example, I have here some chords already played in and I have a retro synth sound loaded in. So on its own right now, this is what it sounds like. And what the arpeggiator is gonna do is it's gonna take these three notes and move through them individually, rather than play them as a chord. Now to load in the arpeggiator, all we have to do is go to our track that we wanna load it on and go over here to our channel strip and go to MIDI effects. So any software instrument track is gonna have this MIDI effects menu and it'll be above where you put your audio effects, like your compression and your EQ, like I have right now. So we'll go to MIDI effects, click there, and it'll be the first one, arpeggiator. And now this loads in our arpeggiator. I'll just move this up here so we can see the chords at the same time. Now, when I press play, you'll no longer hear these being played as chords, but rather individual notes. So it's still these same three notes, but just broken up. Now, a quick and easy way to get started is to check out some of the presets that are included in the plugin. And to do that, all you gotta do is go up here to where it says factory default. And here you'll see a whole list of different presets. And these will basically just load in different patterns. At the moment, our notes are just broken up in an upward motion. So starting on the lowest note and moving to the top, and that is set by this button right here, the up button. So if you listen, you'll hear it going from low to high. Now, if we check out some of the presets here, you'll see how the patterns will change. So let's start, for instance, with this arcade trills. And if you wanna just quickly skim through the different presets, you can do that with the little arrow buttons here. So this will just go to the next one. So as you can see, there's a lot of different patterns to check out and you can see which one best fits to your song. Now, of course, you can also start from scratch and develop your own patterns. So let's take a little look at some of the different functions to do that. So I'm just gonna go back to the factory default. So let's look at some of the different options we have. The first is just the play button. So when we hit that, that'll just stop the arpeggiation. Down here we have the rate. So that's the rate at which the notes are playing. So right now we're at 16th notes. If we go to, let's say eighth notes, you'll hear how those notes move slower. And those will all be locked to the tempo that you have set in your Logic project. Next, we have the direction of how those notes are moving. So right now, we're just going 
in an upwards direction. So starting from the lowest note and moving up from there. You can change it to downward. So it's starting with the highest note and then moving downwards. Or up and down, start at the bottom, go to the top and then back down again. Now this one's gonna start at the bottom note, jump to the highest note, and then go to the next lowest note and then the next highest note. And this one's a randomizer, so it's gonna start on a random note. And then this last one will play the notes in the order they're played. So if all your notes are not perfectly quantized, then it'll play the first one that appears, and so on and so on. I'm just gonna go back to, to the up-down for now. Um, then we have variation and octave range. So right now we're just in one octave, so it's just gonna play these notes in the same octave that I played them. But if I add a second octave, you'll hear how those notes go higher. And same when I go with three and four. Now these different levels of variations are gonna change things as well. So depending on which one you choose here, it's gonna access those octaves at a different time. So for example, if we listen to, let's start with octave two and listen to variation one again. So just running up and down. You can hear how that changes a little bit. So it's still the same notes, but it's just kind of running them in a different pattern. Now, if you hover over octave range here, this changes to inversions. So this will actually change the inversion that your chord is played. So for example, here we have an A minor chord, which is A, C, and E. So the first inversion of A minor would be to move this A to the top. And so the bottom note would be C, and then E and A. And then second inversion, would start with the E, for example. And then we'd have an E, an A, and a C. So now let's look at creating our own patterns. So if I go down here to the pattern menu and switch to grid, you'll see a grid from one to 16. And currently just one is lit up. So if I press play now, sound like that but if I start creating a longer pattern let's say 16 then it'll sound like this so right now every step is filled with a note but I can turn those off to omit some notes for example and create a bit of rhythmic variation that way. And then another thing you can do is you'll see down here these little notes. So if we select some of those, then whenever it hits those moments, it'll actually play a chord rather than a single note. And another thing we can do is adjust the velocity of these notes which is how loud each one of these notes are playing. So right now they're all playing at the same volume, but if I click and drag this down, this will change the volume that these notes are played at. So that'll introduce even more variation. And we can also shorten the duration of these notes. So once again, if we click and drag from right to left, I can shorten the value of those notes. And you can also lengthen them across different steps. And of course, you can start with a preset 
and then change that to however you'd like. So there's an overview to get you started in the Logic Pro Arpeggiator. Now let's look at what this might sound like in the track itself. So arpeggiators, you'll hear this a lot in kind of pop and EDM music, and it's a real good way of just adding interest to your track. So as you've heard what we have in there right now, this is just a quick little loop that it created, and it sounds like this without the arpeggiator. So I just took the chords from that progression, which you can see here, and we'll add our arpeggiator back in. So it's a real easy way of just kind of augmenting your track a little bit. I'm gonna leave you with a little bonus tip here, and that's gonna be regarding the Alchemy Synth plugin, which I have loaded right here. And Alchemy actually has a built-in arpeggiator right in it. So if you go down here, you'll notice that there's an arpeggiator. So I'm just gonna solo this track, and that sounds like this. And it's quite similar to the arpeggiator plugin that we used earlier. You can change the mode, so up and down, so on and so on, the rate, octave, a lot of the same controls that we had in the other plugin. Now an easy way to find arpeggiated sounds in Alchemy is just using the arpeggiated category here in the browser menu. So if you hit that, that'll automatically give us any kind of arpeggiated sound. So if I click on this preset, for example, and hold down a chord, I'll get that arpeggiator, and then I can change sounds, and this will be an arpeggiated sound as well. So there you go. So I hope that helps clarify what an arpeggiator is and how do you go about using it. And hopefully that gives you a few ideas on how you can implement this in your own tracks. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comment box below. And if you want to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, don't forget to download my free Logic Pro hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you join the video and we'll see you in the next one.